Hello everyone and welcome back to another build video. In a similar vein to a recent build video I made, I'm back with another festive themed build and this time we're covering the Easter Bunny. So the Easter Bunny is a figure that heralds in spring and new life. Now the origins around the character of this holiday celebrate resurrection and rebirth, quite literally celebrating life. And now we can look at the lore of these holidays through two different lenses. So starting with looking at the holiday through this Christian lens, it's a celebration of Jesus overcoming death and being resurrected after death on the cross. Meanwhile, looking at this holiday through a pagan lens, Ostara was believed to be the celebration of the goddess Yostre, celebrating the coming of spring and new life after winter. And now even going into the unique lore of the bunny and eggs has an interesting part to play. Now, some equate the image of, you know, this character of the Easter Bunny because they were sacred to the goddess Yostre and were often seen as symbols of fertility and new life. The imagery of the eggs once again being a symbol of new life, but also the decoration of eggs was thought to be made in celebration to Yostre again during the holiday of Ostara. And over the blend of these two holidays in different cultures, we gradually gained the character of the Easter Bunny, who is thought to herald in spring and bring comfort and merriment to children, they're also known to only give good children eggs and candy, as well as just hiding them too for good children to find. And now given these criteria, how would we build the Easter Bunny to embody the characteristics of these holidays? So to start with, as you might have guessed, the first thing you want to do is make your character Harringen. Harringen are the go-to rabbit race in D&D, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a better option than them. Harringen gain a bonus to their initiative rolls equal to their proficiency bonus, you also get a free skill. Typically, the skill that they give you at starting is Perception. You also have a bonus to your Dexterity saving throws as well, which can come in handy, especially, you know, if Fireball is a thing, which it usually is. And then you also have some fantastic mobility options, too, with your Rabbit Hop feature. And this is very much so their iconic feature. As a bonus action, you can jump a number of feet equal to five times your Proficiency bonus without provoking Opportunity attacks. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So this is great for just bolting in and out of combat when you really need to. Now for our background, you'll want to take the Silencia Initiate. What this background does is give us a wider array of spells that we can add to our spell list. Plant growth is the key spell of importance here, very much so for flavoring. You see, focusing on the celebration of spring, being able to make plants grow and be fertile, seems right up the alley of what we're trying to do with this build. And now for your stats, you'll want to focus on maximizing charisma, since our multi-classing is strongly going to be dependent on this. And now for our starting class, we'll want to go Sorcerer. Divine Soul Sorcerer to be specific. Divine Soul Sorcerers are great. They're a subclass that gives you access to all of the Sorcerer and Cleric spells. And using this, we can easily get a majority of the spells and abilities that we need to pull off this build. For example, we'll be able to take the spell Create Food and Water, which I'm flavoring as the way that the Easter Bunny can make so many eggs and candies so fast and then just hide and leave them around. And from this point, it's important to take as many healing and support spells. And just overall, this build is meant to be more of a support given the nature of the Easter Bunny itself. Use your abilities to instill life in the environment and even creatures around you to the advantage of your party. Be sure to pick up handy low-level healing spells like Revivify, Healing Word, Cure Wounds, and many others. That would definitely fall within the Cleric spell list. And thanks to your Sorcerer's Metamagic, you have the ability to twin many of these spells for your party too. And this is fantastic for saving resources such as high-level spell slots. And around 5th level of Sorcerer, by this point we'll probably have picked up all of the important utility and healing options that we're going to need, so then we can hop over to Warlock. Celestial Warlock, to be specific. Celestial Warlocks get some additional free healing that we can add to our kit, which is great and the flavor fits really well here too. As I mentioned earlier in the video, whether you're looking at the origins of the Easter Bunny through a Christian or a Pagan route, there's definitely some sort of divine slash celestial being behind our powers. And I think the Divine Soul Sorcerer and the Celestial Warlock combo showcases this very strongly. And now we'll want to go three levels into Warlock and pick up our Pact Boon, specifically Pact of the Chain and we'll want to take the sprite as our familiar. The reason for this specific boon and familiar is because sprites have this very unique ability to know what a creature's alignment is. Now going back to the Easter Bunny's lore, they have the ability to know whether children have been good or bad, and will only give goodies to good children. And the main way to know this, at least with this build, is having a sprite do reconnaissance. All the sprite needs to do is just touch and tap a target and use their heart sight ability, and then you know what that target's alignment is. 
And now at this point, we actually have a pretty complete build. By at least 8th level, we have all the criteria we need to be our Easter Bunny, and we only get stronger as we continue to progress throughout the game. We have tons of healing that we can offer our party through our class features and spells, as well as a strong flexibility with these options thanks to meta magic and font of magic. And let's not forget that this is a Sorlock, so we can very easily use our Warlock spell slots and give ourselves even more Sorcerer points thanks to our font of magic. And then from those Sorcerer points, we can then use those to get even more Sorcerer spell slots. And then coupling this with a very strong evasive abilities thanks to our Heron Gun is going to be very important, because as you would have guessed, a Sorcerer Warlock is not the tankiest build, especially not one of the tankiest builds we've covered on this channel. So making sure that you're in the right place in combat and making sure you don't get, you know, pinched down is going to be a very important focus for you in combat. But anyways, that's all for the build. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please like the video and subscribe for even more D&D content and builds. And for those of you that celebrate, I hope you have a happy Easter or Ostara. And in the meantime, keep smiling, keep scheming, and I'll see all of you next time.